terms of our architectural thinking, I'm hoping um, that what it does is reinforce what we always felt was right about giving people access to you know, good daylight, you know, and good air and, uh, and access to green space. I would hope that we will be, there will be more, certainly more um, better response to the idea of, of buildings that are certainly better serviced in terms of their ventilation and, and air quality. The scheme that we've recently completed for Financial Conduct Authority, which is all about full fresh air, it's about using natural buoyancy, it's, it's, it's got the technologies that went in, I mean, they're the technologies we used with Lloyd's Register of Shipping 20 years ago, a relatively low cost commercial building. This crisis, I think, really, for me, reinforces what we always thought architecture should be about, which is that it should be for people. We are there to provide space that is inspirational, that is safe, but is also healthy um, for the people that use it. And, you know, we call it wellness. The work that we've been doing for Modular, in my mind, really perhaps reflects this age and, and in fact is, which is, I think, sort of intensified through this, through the current crisis. And, and you know, the fact that we were able, you know, at, at, let's say at Ladywell, which is the first example of it, I think at a reasonable scale, to deliver really well designed, airy, spacious, um, really low energy. But the important thing is it's, it's quality of space. Um, and that, you know, it's for homeless families. So it's about balancing inequality. You can imagine those people who would have been um, housed in temporary hostel accommodation. In this particular moment, you know, to be in that place, and that, um, as opposed to the old, that awful alternative, I mean, I can't even imagine it. It's certainly something which will have a profound effect on, on construction. You know, already in the commercial sector, you know, buildings are effectively made off-site and then just assembled on-site. And this is taking that to domestic sector, but actually also uh, what's nice at Ladywell, it's also you know, it's also community retail and this sort of thing. I guess if we were to see what might come out of this emergency is there might be more recognition that there isn't one size fits all, actually, that we need to create architecture that allows people to do lots of things in lots of different ways. You know, architects, of course, we love the idea of mixed use mixed use, it's about sharing resources, it's um, also about blurring boundaries, um, which I think is a, has to be more flexible for the future. If we're asked to put parking structures in, I mean, these days you do not put a parking, I mean, you try not to do it at all, but if you're somehow forced to by regulation, the next thing you do is persuade the client that you need to design that parking structure so that within the, its lifespan, it can be turned into something else. Simple, flexible, usable, nice volumes, you know, things that naturally feel good, doesn't matter whether it's an office, whether it's a home, whether it's a workshop, whether it's a retail unit, a restaurant. I mean, it's just quality space and it's creating quality space that you can use any way you like. Good architecture should make you feel well. So often architecture fails in that regard. I am hoping that what will come out of this crisis is, a, is a, a recognition that actually those things that make are fundamental for having healthy lives together will be seen more seriously. Mm -hmm.